Welcome to McDougall. On today's show, how to fight PMS with our guest, Holly Anderson. Hello, I'm Wayne Judd. And now, not your meat and potatoes kind of guy, Dr. John. Let's see, you, you're a family man. You have some kids. That's right. I sure do. I've got I've got children too. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that has been brought out in the last oh, I would say four or five decades, is the fact that the onset of maturity of our children has changed. Yeah, that's true. And the kids are getting they're getting to become adults younger and younger. And uh, scientists have figured out why that's happened. I, I would say one of the biggest uh, stimulus for this understanding came from watching the little girl in Japan mature. What they found is that the, uh, at the end of World War II, a little girl in Japan started her first menstrual period when she was around, oh, about uh, 15 years old. And prior to that, it was even, it was even later in life, maybe around uh, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Around 15 years old, she started her first menstrual period, and then uh, by 1960, she was starting her menstrual period at around 14, by 1970, around uh, 12 or 13 years of age. But this is going somewhere, isn't it, John? Yes. Oh, okay. This has happened in every society. Our children have matured younger in life. Right. And, you know, you would wonder why. You know, why is, uh, why is this happening in every society? Uh, and what we find is the common denominator here, Wayne, is the change in diet that takes place in these societies. The Japanese people changed their diet after World War II. In China today, the little girl matures at around 17 years of age, whereas the little Chinese girls that live in the United States, they mature at around 12. But that's amazing. How could diet possibly make well, a this, difference in this how Well, this again has mature. been worked out pretty well. But before I tell you how it happens, first I want you to think about one of the implications that really troubles me. And that is that in our society, we have chaos. We have all kinds of problems in our high schools and junior highs. Right. And I, I think one of the reasons is, is we take little kids and we give them sexual desires, reproductive functions, and capabilities four years before nature intended, four years before they're mentally prepared to handle this. As a consequence, we have chaos. The uh, second issue is, is we have also have more disease related to this early onset of maturity. For example, scientists have discovered, they've known for years, that the longer, a, longer the reproductive life of a woman, the more a chance of getting breast cancer and uterine cancer. So what do we do, quit feeding our kids? No, what we do is we quit feeding them this very rich diet that we're giving them. This rich diet makes them mature Good longer. Good luck. Good luck, John. Well, I know it's hard, but, uh, but, but something has to be done to improve the health, not only of our children or our adults. And so when people understand this, you know, action can be taken. There are a couple of ways that we know that this happens, this uh, earlier onset of maturity. One is, is that when you eat the rich American diet, you make bile acids in your liver. They go into your intestinal tract, and these bile acids are turned into, into reproductive-like hormones by bacteria that grow under the influence of this rich Western diet full of meat and dairy products and lacking in fiber. The other thing that happens is a woman recirculates her own hormones when you eat the rich Western diet. Now, can you explain that? That really sounds... In detail, I'll explain it to you. Okay. What happens is women make uh, estrogens, for example, in their ovaries and their adrenal glands and some in their fatty tissues. And these estrogens, uh, they circulate one time through a woman's body. They affect her breasts, her uterus, her skin. And then they go to the liver where they are, they are uh, attached to another substance. It's called conjugation. And they're attached so that when the estrogen is excreted through the liver into the bile and into the bowel, that it leaves the body. Okay. But when you eat the rich Western diet, you grow bacteria in your intestinal tract that cleave this conjugation, break it apart, so the estrogen is now reabsorbed back through the body for another passage. And as a result of these two mechanisms, and probably many more, what happens is we have this, this exaggerated stimulation of a woman's body by estrogen earlier in life, so she matures earlier. At 12 years old, she starts her first period instead of uh, 15, 16, 17 when she should. Plus, at the other end of life, she also extends her reproductive life. In other words, menopause takes place at 52 instead of, say, 46 or 48. This is, uh, this is amazing. Um... Well, the consequences are serious, too, not just the social implications I told you about, but also to this prolonged stimulation of hormones throughout life, exaggerated on both ends, plus higher. It's 50% higher stimulation during a woman's reproductive life. This overstimulates her organs, like her breasts, 
her uterus, and as a result, she gets uh, she gets uh, tender breasts. We call that fibrocystic breast disease. It, it it promotes breast cancer in women. It promotes uterine cancer in women. It causes them to have heavy menstrual periods and abnormal uterine bleeding. Abnormal uterine bleeding, they'll use they'll have a hysterectomy for often. Causes, as I mentioned, uterine cancer and also fibroids of the uterus. So. The, uh, the disease implications are tremendous, and I just don't want to pick on women for this, uh, Wayne. I also want you to know the same exaggeration of hormones takes place in men. So what shall we do, John? Well, I think along with uh, solving heart disease and obesity and breast and colon cancer this country is trying to do with a better diet, we're going to ask, end up solving some of our social problems and other female problems by getting the diet straightened around. Back to what it used to be, lots of starches, vegetables, and fruits, and I think that's a good Good thing for us to think about considering our next guest. Our next guest, Holly Anderson, is going to talk to us about one of these very important female problems, PMS, and we'll be back in just a moment. You can learn English at home. Watch Hello Channel. And welcome back. With us is Holly Anderson. She is the founder and director of the PMS Treatment Clinic in Arcadia, California. Uh, did you get involved in PMS because of, uh, of a personal thing? Did you used to suffer from it? Yes, it stemmed out of my own disorder, which I had ever since I got my first period. I got it genetically, and that's one of the ways that women get PMS through heredity. If a mother has it, the children, the girls usually will end up having it as well. And it gets worse as a woman gets older, and when a woman turns 32, her progesterone level starts to decline, and that's why we see so many women suffering with PMS when they're in their mid-30s. And years ago, it was called mid-30s syndrome. Doctors were getting all these complaints in their offices, and it wasn't menopause, and they didn't know what else to call it. So they called it mid-30s syndrome. When I turned 32, my symptoms got extremely severe. I'd never had children. I'd only been on the birth control pill once. And my headaches went into migraines. I couldn't stand the pain, and I used to have to take sleeping pills just to get through it. And my menstrual cramps were so severe my entire life I had to miss school once a month. I missed exams in college. And I had my own business when I was in my 30s, and I had to end up just leaving the business. As soon as I got my period, that was it. Go home, knock myself out with sleeping pills, and try to get through it. And I thought, I cannot live like this. Hmm. And you know, there was no help in the medical community. I, I found Dr. Katharina Dalton's book entitled Once a Month. It came out in about 1978. And I took it to my doctor's office, and I said, I think this is what's wrong with me. I've got premenstrual syndrome. Mm. And yeah. he said, what? <laughs> I've never heard of it. And I was absolutely blown away. When would this have been, roughly? This was about 1980 when I, when I went into the doctor's And he had never heard of PMS? Never, That's never. That's amazing. So, so a woman sp would know she has PMS if it was cyclic? That's yes, one of the important it, things? it is occurring from ovulation through the period. And in young girls, it may be just a week before the period. They may notice symptoms like uh, headaches, mm. migraines. Is that, is that the characteristic thing? Because all the things you mentioned are, are, are problems men can get. All the things you mentioned are problems right, right. that you could get unrelated to your period, migraine, headaches, fatigue, right. and so on. So does, it, does, does the characteristic, that cyclic nature to it, that you can tie it to your period? Yes, it occurs from ovulation through the period. So in young girls, it's a week before. In girl, m women in their 30s, it's like two weeks before. And then it may even continue through the period. But when the period is over, the symptoms should end. Now, two weeks before means that you go for two weeks with these symptoms before the period. That's why it's called pre -menstrual. And that's really pre. Two weeks is a long time when you're doing that uh, that's right. monthly. And yeah. a lot of women are suffering a total of three weeks out of the month. And it's physical it's and emotional. That's so incredible. So it can be um, a lot of depression, crying for no reason, being out of control, saying things they don't mean. They can have physical problems like the headaches, the migraines, the bloating, the food cravings, and even epileptic seizures are connected with this disorder. Don't you, don't you and other women feel a horrible injustice? I mean, isn't there an emotional content to this that would just 
blow us poor male persons away if we had to endure it. Well, it made me feel extremely hopeless. And what is so exciting, though, is that when I finally was able to get the treatment that Dr. Katharina Dalton recommended, the natural progesterone therapy, and as soon as I had the dosage right, all of my suffering ended overnight. And I was so furious because I had suffered all those years and here it was, an unknown entity in the United States medical community. And it, it just made me very, very mad, and I wanted to do something about it. So that's where the cl clinic came about, the treatment yes, center? Yes, it came. It was several years later that everything worked out, that I could found the clinic. Well, based on what you've said so far, then, would you say that, that uh, premenstrual syndrome is a pro progesterone lack? Is that Yes. In fact, Robert T. Frank described it in the medical literature as far back as 1929. He wrote about premenstrual syndrome occurring in the two weeks before the period, and he described it as an excess of estrogen in relation to progesterone. And he said the treatment was natural progesterone. But it was at that time that the hormones were being discovered. Progesterone had been discovered. And all of a sudden, the work went into the birth control pill. And natural progesterone got put on a back burner. And it's like the medical community ignored his works. And it wasn't until 1948 that a woman in England, Dr. Katharina Dalton, who also had migraines in the two weeks before her period, she connected with Dr. Raymond Green, and they worked together on the treatment with natural progesterone, and they then wrote a paper on the premenstrual syndrome. And how successful if women take progesterone? Is this the basis of your clinic treatment center? Yes, we follow the is method the, of Dr. The Katharina Dalton. Supplemented with progesterone right. pills. No, it's not pills. No. It's systemic progesterone. You see, there's too many progesterone receptors located in the liver. Mm -hmm. The receptors are in different parts of the body, and there's a lot of them in the liver. And if you take it orally, it gets metabolized like right. food. First pass, right. metabolism. So right. you need to use it systemically. So we use it either rectally in the form of a rectal suspension or vaginally in the form of suppositories. How about, how about patches like the of estrogens? Can well, you that we way? had discussed that with Dr. Dalton a number of years ago, and they mm -hmm. had tried that in England, and they didn't have much success because they couldn't get enough progesterone into the bloodstream. So do you measure the blood levels of progesterone to decide whether you have enough? Absolutely. Yeah. We do it when they come in. We, we want to look at it to see if it's low. And then after they're on the treatment, we have them take a dosage of progesterone. And then five hours later, we measure their blood. And that will tell us how much progesterone they're absorbing. And the rates of absorption vary from person to person. So one woman may use one dose, and another woman may require a much higher dose. But the results are universally successful. Yes. When the imbalance is corrected, then the woman should become symptom free. And mm -hmm. there's also a diet that has to be followed because the low progesterone causes transient hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia is a low blood sugar condition. Mm -hmm. So the patients need to eat frequently, like every three to four hours. When they don't eat, then they get a drop in the blood sugar, adrenaline goes into their system, and they can become out of control. Well, after a break, I'm going to push you a little bit hard with a question that you may or may not be able to answer, and that is, well, why would women have, women have this in the first place? I mean, I think women are designed wonderfully. Why should they be put in a position where they don't have enough progesterone as they go through life and develop this situation? Is, is it a fault in their design, or is it something that women are doing wrong to induce this kind of a situation? That'll be a tough question for you when we get back. And uh, we'll be back with you in just a moment. <laughs> Learning a new language can be difficult and discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. Hello, I'm Karen, introducing Hello Channel, the revolutionary new channel designed especially to teach English. If you can speak English, the future is open for you, since speaking English means greater opportunity and higher paying jobs. By watching Hello Channel, you are immersed in this valuable language. You'll hear the words being spoken. You'll see the speakers' mouths when they say the words. You'll read what's being spoken in large, clear subtitles. And you'll speak out loud, practicing what you have just learned. There is no better or faster way to learn a language than total immersion. 
Hello Channel does exactly that. There's programming on every level so you can watch the shows that are just perfect for you. Whether you've spoken a little English, a great deal of English, or none at all, the Hello Channel has something for everyone. Join us for a convenient, affordable, and fun way to shape your future. There's so much in store for you if you'll just say hello. And welcome back with me. Holly Anderson, she's from the PMS Treatment Clinic in Arcadia, California, and if you'll get your pencils ready, I'll give you a phone number so that you can contact Holly's clinic and uh, get some help yourself. While you're doing that, uh, let me uh, point out that our studio audience gave the best round of applause we've had in a very long time, and uh, we had some cheering from the women in our studio audience. Uh, they understand this? pleased with that. Uh, some of these folks have been there, Holly, so we're glad you're with us today. How bad does it get? I mean, emotionally, how bad uh, we've heard about, uh, read about sensational stories. Right. In really severe cases, we have seen murder. And there were two cases in England where uh, two women in two different cities each were acquitted of murder based on the PMS defense. And um, one woman had killed her boyfriend. She had run him into a lamppost with her car. And the other woman had killed a co-worker in a bar. And what happens is uh, both of the women were right before their periods, and they had gone eight hours without food. That's where the hypoglycemia came into play. And they had a lot of adrenaline in their system, and they were extremely out of control. And it was not premeditated in any sense. It was spontaneous. It was something that they just did. But don't, doesn't that open the floodgates for other women to commit murder? You know, I mean, somebody's got to be thinking that. I what can't. he's really saying is, is, doesn't it give women an excuse? Is, isn't that what you're well, trying I'm, to say? Well, I'm perhaps responding as a male. This, is, yeah. this frightens me a bit, I must confess. Well, it's very important that your wife be treated. That's all I can <laughs> say to you. <laughs> I see. Uh, all right. Well, we'll take note We've of that. We've had more extreme cases, too, that I could talk about. I mean, women have tried to knife their husbands. Uh, we've had women talk about taking their car on the freeway at 90 miles an hour and running it off the road or running into somebody. Well, I'll say, I'll say this much. We have, in discussions, uh, my wife and I have um, discussed this very issue, as I suppose many couples have. And our uh, bottom line is that we wish 30 years ago we had understood some of these things better. Uh, we consider ourselves very happily married, but I tell you, there were times when we weren't, too. Well, it's very hard for men because if they don't understand this, they don't know what they're dealing with. But they will come to figure out that at least a week before the woman's period, something's going on. And many men will chart their wives and they'll say, you're getting this a week before your period. This must be connected with your menstrual cycle. And but just, just knowing about it is important, even if you don't get the treatment, right? Even if you don't take right. the progesterone, just knowing. Right. If they could follow the diet where they eat every three to four hours, they could improve their symptoms by 30%. If and they can get the right, if they can get the treatment, they can be symptom free. It is true that once once we understand as men what's going on, uh, we're willing to work. I think uh, with with the circumstance in more creative ways. Right, natural progesterone is now um, proven to promote bone formation, and it's being used in menopause to protect women from getting cancer. And We've seen that um, it's also related to depression in women. There's a lot of depression in women that is related to low progesterone. We see it in the menopause, we see it with PMS, we see it with postpartum depression, and we see it with post-hysterectomy syndrome. Can I, uh, can I interject something here? You're saying a progesterone, natural progesterone. You're not talking about progestins like Provera. No. The synthetic progesterones, the progestogens or progestins, they actually lower a woman's progesterone level. And that's why when women go on the birth control pill, they, if they have PMS, they often say, I was crazy on the pill. I couldn't tolerate the pill. It was just terrible. I had all these side effects. And natural progesterone is a prescription item? Yes, it is. And it has to be compounded by a pharmacist. The drug companies don't make it except for the injectable, primarily because they can't get a patent on the natural hormone. Of course. Right. You, you suggested, Holly, if his wife is not receiving treatment, that he hug her close. Does that really work? Does it stimulate progesterone levels? That's what you want to know, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in that sort of treatment, because there are times when that's the last thing on earth the husband wants to do, is to that's hug right. his wife close. Well, Am I right? Now we're getting into therapy. You just have to love her. I mean, she's got an illness, and inside she feels terrible. She may even hate you. 
she doesn't mean to, but this may happen during this time. And what she says is not really true. So you have to love her. That's what she's looking for. Let me give you the phone number for the PMS treatment okay. clinic. It's in Arcadia, California. And you can call 818-447-0679. That's 818-447-0679. Now I want you to answer my question. Did uh, our creator make a mistake in designing women so they have this problem? Or are women doing something wrong in the way they live? that creates a low progesterone situation? Yes, we don't know the exact cause of the problem, but we do know that it's an imbalance of the two hormones, mm. estrogen and progesterone. And if a woman has a tubal ligation, this will give her automatic PMS. We have research now that shows that a woman's progesterone level is lowered after the procedure. And it's probably because the blood supply to the ovaries is cut off. And if a woman has a hysterectomy, it will give her PMS. We Same have reason, right? research. Yeah, the uterus is gone, and that interrupts Wait. the pathway. I'm sorry. Are you saying that a hysterectomy actually it makes it interferes worse. with the blood supply to the ovaries right. when they cut when they make the cut? But I thought that was the solution. You get the, no. the complete hysterectomy, and everything's fine. No, there are about thirteen thousand unnecessary hysterectomies a year to cure PMS. Excuse me, how many? Thirteen thousand, and it makes the PMS worse. It, it would eliminate menstrual cramps because the uterus is gone, but it will make the emotional side of the disorder worse, like there will be depression. We know that 66% of all women who have hysterectomies become clinically depressed, and it's related to progesterone. So a lot of the, a lot of the old methods and a lot of the old, old understandings we had are incorrect. And, uh, this is true. You know, PMS is relatively new in the United States. In fact, it's not even being taught in medical school yet. And the proof, and the proof of the situation is that when you apply progesterone therapy, women feel better, dra dramatically better, and that's, that's right. why you're convinced. That's yes. Right. And we'll be back. Stay tuned. Well, why don't you just say hello? With me, Holly Anderson. This is um, the woman who founded and now directs the PMS Treatment Clinic, Arcadia, California. You got that pencil ready? Here's the phone number again, 818-447-0679 if you need further information. Uh, you heard my introduction about the influence of uh, diet on female hormones. Can you tie that at all in with the PMS? Because, you know, I have to believe that our creator did a good job with women and that it's got to be something that we're doing Yes, it's not things correctly. we're doing to ourselves. So yeah. if you're e eating wrong and you're creating too much estrogen, then you're mm. going to have a condition of PMS. That rich American diet does it and sets things out of balance. But taking progesterone pills may be a more direct way for many women who aren't able to change their diet, or even if they change their diet, it uh, doesn't really seem to make the difference. But, but don't you have to take the right kind of progesterone? Right, it has to be natural progesterone, not synthetic I mean, that's a key point, isn't it, Very in all key. of this? If they call this number, can you uh, direct them to physicians who prescribe natural progesterones? I wish I could. You no. know, it's, it's impossible to say. They have to go to their own doctor. Right. And they have to say, I want natural progesterone cream, not accept. Uh, something like Provera or the progestins. Right, do not accept Provera or the birth right. control pill. And women have to say no to their doctors when they say tubal ligation, you say to? That's right. And hysterectomy. That's right. And Holly Anderson, I want to tell you, this is a great subject, you're a great guest, and it's really important. It's important particularly that us men understand this much That's right. And women know how to get some help to take control of situations. I want to thank you very much for thank being Thank you with so us. much. And uh, please join us next time. Bye-bye.